What's up guys, welcome to Monster Review where we take a look at tech, tech tips and how to videos. A channel where I lay everything on the table and give you my honest and non-purchasable feedback. We're going to be looking at the Galaxy Z Fold and how it compares to a more traditional phone like the Galaxy S21 Ultra. If you want to skip around, feel free to view this video's timeline below. But let's kick off this video with a good old unboxing. Remember, first time holding a Z Fold. It's kind of mesmerizing. We got a SIM tool and USB C charger. I'm sorry, USB cord and the quick start guide, and that's it. Then we have the Z Fold. Alright, so everybody talks about opening and closing the Z Fold. I do see the crease. Um, it does not bother me. I love tech and I gotta say I mean some youtubers will call this a niche product but for some reason I'm just I'm amazed by it this is this is awesome this is freaking awesome I haven't even turned it on and, and I'm just blown away by this this is crazy all right so I'm gonna set this up transfer uh, you know my sim card from this to this and uh, start using it over the course of uh, two weeks maybe and uh, I'll report back to you on what I think so first thing I did was swap Bixby for Google Assistant I made a video on how to do that so if you're interested click here same procedure I used for the S21 Ultra also worked for the Fold 3 I've been using the Fold for almost a week now and let me just say this is by far my favorite phone I fell in love with an idea of using this thing and I feel like this phone is vastly underrated for what it is. Now it's not for everyone, but you often find yourself reaching for your laptop or tablet due to the frustration of being limited by a traditional smartphone screen, then I'd say you might want to consider this phone. I find myself capable of doing almost everything I would normally reach my laptop or tablet for. And it's crazy because although this phone is bigger than your standard candy bar phone, doesn't feel like it when you're carrying it around in your pocket. The Fold is much more comfortable carrying around than the S21 Ultra. Sure, it's heavier coming in at 276 grams, while the S21 Ultra comes in at 239 grams, but the smaller width makes up for the weight, allowing it to fit better in my jeans pocket. The Fold is 67.3 millimeters wide, while the S21 Ultra is 75.5 millimeters wide. The Fold is about 150.5 millimeters long, while the S21 Ultra is about 160.5 millimeters long. So the Fold, while folded, is actually smaller than the S21 Ultra in terms of length and width. But what about thickness? Well, the Fold is 15.2 millimeters thick. Again, that's 15.2 millimeters thick while folded, of course. And the S21 Ultra is about 9.5 millimeters thick. The S21 Ultra is just a big phone. It has a bigger footprint than the Fold folded. It's very noticeable in my pocket. The S21 Ultra has poked me in the waist a couple of times while sitting down because it's longer and wider. I hardly feel the Fold in my pocket, although it's thicker. But I just find it so ironic that I got the S21 Ultra for the bigger display, but yet it's a little uncomfortable to walk around with in my pocket. And yet the Fold has an even bigger screen 
and I don't have any issues carrying it around. So one of the main benefits of foldables. I, I think that's a perk for these folding phones that many people forget. Performance on both phones are the same, which is expected as they both sport the Snapdragon 888 chip. I know you're just waiting for the camera comparison, but we'll get to that later. So what are some standout features that the Fold has over the S1 and One Ultra? Well, I mean, it's in the name, the Fold. Folding is basically the main feature of this phone. There's also some form of flexibility. Samsung didn't just stop at using the phone either folded or unfolded. There is a middle ground. You can use it half folded. And when you do, there are quite some uses for it. For one, you can use it to prop up the camera, place it on the table, and take a picture without using a tripod. Something you can't do with your standard phone. You can also use it to watch videos while sitting it on the table. Multitasking has been upgraded to take advantage of the larger screen. So now, in addition to splitting apps top to bottom like you can on the S21 Ultra, you can also split apps side to side like on a tablet. You can only split a total of three apps, but a fourth app can be added as a pop-up view, which you can move around. Let's talk about the outside cover screen. I feel like this screen doesn't get enough attention. I read some articles from reviewers saying that the outside screen is too small to view things and type correctly. Not too long ago, we were using smartphones with three and a half inch displays. Take a look at my son's iPod touch. This screen is four inches. It's what we got with the iPhone 5. Putting it next to the Fold's cover display, you can see that uh, they're almost the same width. The Fold, though, gives you an extra two and a half inches of screen. So if you had no issues with the iPhone 4 and 5, I doubt you'll have any issues with the Fold's cover display. I mean, the screen is 6.2 inches. How much of a bigger screen do you want for just quick glances? You see, Samsung never intended for you to use the cover screen as your main source of interaction. Yet, they took some of the criticism they received from their past folding devices and gave us something much more capable, even though you have a 7.6 inch screen if you just unfold the device. The 6.2 cover display is more than enough to book a hotel, check notifications, reply to texts, and check your email while you're on the go and, and unable to unfold. If you wanted, you can go your whole day with just using the cover display. The display is bright, beautiful, clear, and it's 120 Hz. It honestly looks just as good as the S21 Ultra screen. For one day, I decided to just use a cover display to see if I can do everything I normally would on the S21 Ultra. And spoiler alert, you can. I had no issues with typing text. As a matter of fact, I had fewer mistakes typing on the cover display than I do on the S21 Ultra. I make fewer mistakes on the cover display than the internal 7.6 inch screen. And no, I don't have tiny hands. Because the cover display is narrow, it makes the phone really comfortable for me to hold. It makes one-handed operations uh, enjoyable. I like it. Making it bigger just doesn't make sense to me. And gaming on it while holding the phone sideways is familiar and comforting. It reminds me of my Game Boy Advance. Kind of weird, but true. So how is gaming on the Fold versus the S21 Ultra? Well, they're the same. Again, both phones sport the same chip. The difference would be in the screen size. And let me just say, gaming on a bigger screen is so much better. I'm not a fan of mobile games. Many YouTubers have put the fold through its pace of mobile games and found no issues whatsoever. But I, I wanted to test it in like my own crazy way. So first, I threw some classic Crash Bandicoot Warped. Most hardwares these days have no issues playing PS1 games, and the same goes for both the Fold and the S21 Ultra. Both handled Crash beautifully. The on-screen controls on the Fold 7.6 inch screen makes it uncomfortable to treat it as a portable gaming device. The S21 Ultra is a bit more comfortable to game with either vertically or horizontal. But you can game with the Fold's cover screen. But the Fold paired with a PS4 remote and phone stand allowed me to play Crash so comfortably that I was able to relive the good old days of playing Crash in the middle of the night. The next game I threw at it was Vice City Stories for the PSP. Again, the Fold and S21 Ultra handled it beautifully. But pairing the Fold with a phone stand and PS4 remote again gives you a very comfortable gaming experience at your desk, uh, in your car, wherever you may be that you know you have a phone stand 
and PS4 remote lying around. But the screen is large enough to see everything just as you would on a TV. The last test was Spider-Man Miles Morales using PS5 Remote Play app. And let me just say, wow. This blew my mind. The screen is just so big and beautiful that not once was I like, you know what? I need to play this on my TV. I was getting the 60 frames per second gameplay and everything looked crisp thanks to the display. You might see some lag in my demo, but that was because I was a good distance away from my router. So gameplay struggled, you know, just a little bit. Now I'm not saying the S20 and Ultra can't do any of these gameplays because it can. However, when you unfold the fold and start gaming like I did, it's a whole new world. And although the touch controllers on the fold is cumbersome to use, it's still amazing to play on a big display you just happen to, you know, pull out of your pocket, regardless if you suck using the on-screen controllers. But again, all this can be achieved on a regular Galaxy device, as I showed. The main difference is in screen size. So how does the camera on the fold compare to the S21 Ultra? Okay, so now this is a lake that was in front of me when uh, in the parking lot. Um, both pictures look very identical. You would think they were from the same cameras. I'm starting to see that when you use the front screen to take pictures, it does this weird aspect ratio or chooses a weird aspect ratio. However, when you open the screen, you're able to match it more to like the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, if you look past that, uh, they both pretty much look pretty good. Now zoomed in, you can see that they both, uh, you know, look exactly the same. Um, nothing too impressive about either of them. Tree looks exactly the same. Water fountain looks exactly the same. The pole looks slightly uh, darker in the S21 Ultra. Maybe the contrast is too high and it looks a little bit, just a tiny bit more uh, natural with the fold. But they both look good. And of course, if you wanted to actually get a clean zoomed shot with the S21 Ultra, you definitely can do that. As you can see here, the fold does not have a 10 times zoom. So unfortunately, you're only you're capped at uh, two. Yeah, so there's S21 Ultra. It's a little bit too bright. Um, yeah, the, the light really washed it up. But I mean, just look at the detail in the car and in the stop sign when you look at the max zoom of the fold if i didn't see the picture from the s21 ultra i would have no idea what kind of car this is another aspect of uh the s21 camera is the ability to take awesome macros and so we have the mustang emblem that's on the steering wheel and just looking at it right here you could see that the s21 ultra is just a lot cleaner a lot brighter and it's again this just like the zoom it's no competition it's better on the s21 ultra so here is an interesting one this is the one ring that i have hung up on my rear view mirror the fold decided to focus on the very front of the ring while the s21 ultra decided to put everything into focus they both look like good pictures this one has like a nice bokeh effect like it was taken with the DLSL, DSLR even though it's not in portrait mode. I don't know why it did this. I did not have it in portrait mode. Um, this one, although everything is in focus on the S21 Ultra, I gotta say the the um, the fold just did a really good artistic job with taking the photo. Like I really like the one that the fold took. However, the S21 Ultra isn't bad either. Me, I would definitely go with the fold because it's it's. I like how clean the front looks and the blur effect going on in the background. Um, but uh, this one is fine too, so uh, they both win. But me personally, I would go with the fold. Looking at both of these pictures right off the bat, they both look really good. I like how both of them came out. Let's zoom in. And we start to see a little bit of a different story here. Uh, take a look at the 2.3 turbo badge. The one on the S21 Ultra came out way too dark. It is not that dark. Too much contrast there and uh, look at the wheel well and the wheel the fold captured a lot more detail a lot more shadow detail you can see that there's far more detail 
um, and realism in the uh, fold. The uh, S21 Ultra, it just it put too much contrast and you lost a lot of shadow details. Uh, so definitely liking the look of the fold. And looking at the carbon fiber hood, um, looks very similar, both of them. Looking inside the car, they both look good. Alright, another shot of the car. Uh, this one is interesting. A Galaxy S21 Ultra, for some reason, it's darker than the Fold. The Fold came out uh, brighter with a lot more details. Like, for example, look at the reflection in the headlight. You can see me very clearly. You can see the PDQ in the background. Uh, the light bar in the headlight looks a lot cleaner with the S21 Ultra than it does on the Fold. I'm guessing maybe that light bar interfered with the uh, S21 Ultra. Uh, you can see a lot more detail in the hood. You can see the carbon fiber weaves in the S21 Ultra. You can see, you can see the weaves, but you can't really uh, see it as clear with the S21 Ultra. And again, if we look over here, you can see the air intake right here and uh, you can't really make it out in the S21 Ultra. Alright so now let's take a look at some night shots. Right off the bat looking at the pictures you can see that the S21 Ultra has a lot more saturation than the Galaxy Z Fold. Let's zoom and take a look here. And uh, when we zoom in we can see that the Z Fold has a lot more clarity. The picture is sharper than the Galaxy S21 Ultra and if you go in closer you can kind of see that that uh, for yourself here and um, also you can see like the saturation uh, but look at the grass look how look how muddy and and you know mushy this looks and look how look how clean this looks a big difference even the chair this this is way too saturated um, this is uh, not as saturated this is true to color and uh, you can kind of see the texture in the chair whereas this one is just a muddy mess we'll give this one to the z fold okay in this shot i played around with the aspect ratio a little bit on the z fold and the s21 ultra i got the aspect ratio to match so that's why it looks similar and so here we have uh the back of the house where the ac compressor is um so yeah both shots are are very similar um again the s21 ultra has a little bit more saturation and it's a little bit it's a little bit brighter like you can you can make out the ground on the s21 ultra you can't really make out the ground on the z fold and uh, let's zoom in a little bit here on the ac um so like when we zoom in a little bit this is interesting like you can see um more of the image because it's lighter on the s21 ultra um like you can clearly see well not clearly but you can make out that this is a branch a tree of some sort a bush can't really make that out on the z fold uh, however it does look like like the s21 ultra looks like a painting like everything is just muddy the whole picture is muddy whereas on the uh the galaxy z fold it's like look at this look at this line right here it's sharp and the color is not muddy and we zoom in you can see you can see that you can you can see more of it for yourself um so yeah i'm gonna have to give this to the uh, z fold okay this is a really nice shot i like both pictures they look clean they look uh bright and um, you know it, it's absolutely amazing how far night shot technology has come because this I couldn't see I couldn't see crap all I saw was the light that's how dark it was but look at all the detail that they were able that both cameras were able to capture I am seeing a lot more detail in the s21 ultra well I won't say detail but I, I'm saying I'll see more of the image. I am seeing more of the image. And when we zoom in, both pictures, they look identical. They look like, uh, you know, they might have been shot with the same camera. I'm not seeing any difference that stick out yet. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Now I'm starting to see something here. Okay, so, yeah. So going back to, like, what I was talking about earlier, uh, again, this looks like a painting. Like, it's all mush. It's, a, it's one big mush. Um, on the Z Fold, there is more. It's there, there's a lot more sharpness in the grass. Like you know, you can see the texture of the grass. Not completely, but you can make it out. And this one, it's just looks like a painting. I don't know why it's doing that. Let me see. Oh yeah. So if you see the the edge of the trampoline here, there's 
much more clarity in the Z Fold, but on the S21 Ultra, it's not really that clear. If we look into the fence, again, you can see what I was talking about. Like, you can look, look right here how mushy it looks, and look at this right here how sharp it looks. You can see the straight lines. Um, yeah, no, that, that is very interesting. I did not expect that. I did, I did not expect this kind of results from the night shot, especially seeing how well, you know, both cameras perform in regular scenarios. This is, this is, this kind of, I'm not going to say drastic, but it is a big difference. And again, look at the grass in the, in the field behind, uh, this yard, like, detail in this one and the Z fold and just uh just some mush um so I'm probably gonna have to uh, I'm gonna give this one to the, the Z fold but uh, just looking at the photos both photos like this they both look good okay so here's another shot um, before I go into details more detail about it both shots were shot with 9 by 16 aspect ratio and again like you know you can see right off the bat how muddy how blurred a little bit blurry the uh, s21 ultra came out um, however I did shoot uh, this picture again with the s21 ultra using the 3 by 4 aspect ratio and uh, we got we got more clarity in the photo using the 3x4 and the 9x16 on the fold and the 3x4 on the uh, S21 Ultra you can see that there's more clarity in the S21 Ultra um, especially with the tree if you even if you zoom into like um, uh, the playground set uh, it, it's it's more clear than the Z fold however it's still oversaturated um, so yeah and then if we scroll up to the tree you can see you can see more detail in the S21 Ultra than you can on the Z Fold. Um, however, when you jump to the 9x16 aspect ratio night shot taken with the S21 Ultra, again we're getting the same results. We're getting a very muddy looking picture that's oversaturated. Has more details. I'm just going to skip this photo here. Okay, here we go. Finally, finally, there's a sharp, well, not sharp, there's a clean picture, uh, night shot picture taken with the S21 Ultra. Right, look at this. This is, this is, this is a heck of a lot better than what, you know, we were seeing before. The night shot on the S21 Ultra wasn't always the best. Both pictures look good. Uh, the S21 Ultra did lighten the sky way too much. It changed it to make it look kind of like it evening shot the fold also did the same thing um if we zoom into the playhouse uh again we're starting to get uh into the s21 ultra did uh oversaturate the image but it did produce a sharper image than the z fold like for example look at this look at this slide uh, it has uh, it's sharper than the Z Fold, um, but I don't I wouldn't say it's better because with that sharpness also comes a lot more noise. Like check out the noise on on the slide on the uh, S21 Ultra. Here's a broken down playset that was in the back. Um, there was no light hitting this playset whatsoever. Uh, but check out the Z Fold. You look at the S21 Ultra like what the heck is that? But on the Z Fold, you know, you can kind of see that it's some kind of playhouse, some kind of treehouse. Uh, it's actually a playset. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Z Fold on this one. Okay, um, and I, I'm I'm kind of getting tired of saying this, but again, oversaturated and uh, muddy, not sharp. Uh, you know, the same old jargon I was using before with the S21 Ultra. On the fold, we are getting a cleaner image, um, less saturation. Look at that. That is, that is vastly different. Like, I don't understand why aspect ratio is causing such a huge problem on the um, on the S21 Ultra. This is a software issue. Then I think Samsung needs to get on it and fix it right away because this is just this is bad. 
look at that. Again, we're getting like a painting effect. And look at the kitty, kitty swing. It's, it's a blob. Furry, fuzzy, clean, sharp. Wow. Okay, again, Z fold for the win. Okay, finally, we're getting something here. We're getting, we're getting better here. So uh, in this shot, again, uh, it's it's a little bit more saturated than the Z fold, but the S21 Ultra did clean, did take an overall cleaner photo. Okay, so if we zoom into the tree trunk, they look similar. Very similar, yeah. Which is good news for the S21 Ultra because, you know, at least now we're getting a photo that's on par with the Z Fold. I'm getting some weird noise in the photo, like, I don't know if you can see it, but look at the lines. It might depend on your display, but I'm getting some artifact here, like a wavy artifact taken with the S21 Ultra. I'm not sure if this is done because the, uh, the S21 is punching in the sharpness a little too much. But we're not getting that noise on the Z Fold. It's nowhere on the Z Fold. But we are getting it on in, in the sky in the sky on the S21 Ultra. Okay, so you can both pictures look good. I don't know. This one is is up in the air. I, if you're gonna if you're gonna make me choose one, I'm going to go with the fold just because there's. There's very little to complain about. When the S21 Ultra, it's like, you know, you look at it, you're like, oh, wow, finally a nice picture. And then, like, you know, if you zoom in too much, you start seeing this crap here. Like, what what the heck is that? I don't know. Okay, all right. So this is the last phone. And, uh, again, the S21 Ultra, it just, this photo has way too much saturation going on here. The tree is not that green. The wood is not that brown. And I'm already seeing some artifacts in the sky here. Over here also. We're getting some wavy effect. Um, we're not really getting it on, on the Z Fold. Uh, let's zoom in here to, let's see. Uh, zoom into the window first here. All right, so window. Uh, the green on the Z Fold is just way more accurate than the, Z, than the S20 Ultra. That's, it's way too uh, too saturated. Mm, roof looks good. The lines look sharper on the S21 Ultra. Uh, tree is way too green on the uh, S21 Ultra. Uh, the sky is a light blue. Just, uh, the sky is a weird color on the S21 Ultra. Okay, so so I, I I think we finally have a decent photo here for the S21 Alt. These artifacts we're getting in the sky, cleanest night shot we've we've gotten so far. However, I'm still gonna go with the Z Fold, just because the color is just it's just accurate. Uh, this is way too saturation. I mean, I like me some saturation, but this is just way too much for me. So that's the comparison. Very interesting results. I was not expecting that at all. So what we can gather is that the outdoor shots, indoor shots, the S21 Ultra and the Galaxy Z Fold are, are pretty much neck and neck when it comes to uh, picture quality and all that goodness, the sharpness, color. However, um, as you saw, when we got into uh, the night shots, it was a... Uh, completely different story. I'm not going to narc on the S21 Ultra and say that the night shots are terrible, the camera's terrible. I'm not gonna do that because it, I feel like Samsung can very well fix these issues that we were having on the S21 Ultra using a software update because I don't see why we're getting such bad performance when we're using 9x16 aspect ratio because we're using 9x16 on the Z Fold and we're not getting that kind of results. So I'm not understanding why 3x4 is producing better night shots than 916 on the uh, S21 Ultra. Because on the Galaxy Z Fold, whether it's 3x4 or 916, they both look good. So 
It seems like there is a bug with the S21 Ultra that Samsung might be working on now, but yeah, so we're not going to focus too much on, on those night shots, but just know that the Z Fold did take better night shots than the S21 Ultra, surprisingly. The Fold's camera isn't necessarily better or worse than the S21 Ultra. And, uh, and I'm surprised because some tech bloggers bashed the camera on the Fold, putting it on par with the cameras we got on the S20 series. If that's true, I don't know. If it is, then I think we overrated the cameras on the S21 Ultra just a little too much. But as a consumer, seeing how well the Fold cameras held up against Samsung's best camera phone, I'm happy. I was expecting terrible camera performance. But if cameras are very important to you, then I have to tell you there are a few camera features the S21 Ultra has that the Fold does not. So uh, the S21 Ultra has a 10 times optical zoom and 100 times space zoom, which is fancy talk for 100 times digital zoom. It does 8K video recording at 24 frames per second, a 40 megapixel 4K selfie camera instead of a 10 megapixel selfie camera that we get on the outside display of the uh, Z Fold, a three times 10 megapixel zoom lens instead of a two times 12 megapixel zoom lens, and the ability to do 4K at 30 frames per second as well as 60 frames per second, where the Fold only allows 4K 60 frames per second on the main camera. So you are getting more camera features with the S21 Ultra, but not enough to say, you know, forget the Fold in my opinion. In terms of video, uh, they both were in, on par in my opinion. There are certain videos that I prefer the Z Fold over the S21 and then there's videos that I prefer the S21 um, over the Z Fold. Um, so video was, they, they were neck and neck in terms of video performance. Um, however, in, in my book and all the camera phones that I've used, if you want superb video recording, hands down, iPhone, you can't beat an iPhone. So we finally get S Pen support for the Fold and this is actually a pretty big deal because the Fold's internal screen isn't your typical glass screen. It's plastic, but yet uh, Samsung pulled it off. So kudos to them. Now, is it a must? Probably not. For one, you need to get a Fold case that holds the S Pen. This will increase the width of the phone to 80 millimeters from 67.3. This is a little wider than an iPhone 11. So it's less than ideal. And the case is okay, I guess. For one, the flap for the cover screen doesn't have any magnets, so it doesn't lock into place. It can just open if you hold it upside down. And when you fold the front cover to open the phone, it uh, sticks out and the phone isn't quite comfortable to hold as it is without the case. There is a plus though, well maybe two. It does its job and gives a place for the S Pen to live. And I have found that if you bend the front cover back at an angle, you can have it prop up the phone while it's unfolded. I mean, but that's it. Seems like the case was an afterthought. What they really wanted to sell you was the pen, but they needed to give you a place to store it. This is the same execution they had with the uh, Galaxy S21 Ultra. It also has S Pen support, however, you need a case to hold the S Pen. But with the S21 Ultra, you could pick up a fake S Pen from eBay for a dollar, and it will work with the S21 Ultra. I've done it. I wish I could show you, since I didn't have a place to store the pen, I used to keep it behind my ears, and it fell out one day at Home Depot. Unfortunately, with the Fold, you're going to need the official Fold Edition S Pen. Do not buy a fake S Pen or standard Note S Pen for the Fold. It will destroy your display, not might, will. So the S Pen Fold Edition does work really well with the Fold, but it's not necessary. If you happen to be a person that needs to physically write their notes instead of typing, then yeah, you might want to look into the S Pen. The Fold does have Samsung's notepad that transcribes your writing to type text and it works really well. If you also happen to be an artist, you also might want to look into the S Pen. It's not a Surface Pro setup, but I mean, it will definitely help you sketch your art wherever you may be without access to your uh, drawing tablet. And if you're wondering how I got the case with the NES controller on it, uh, no, Samsung does not sell a case with the NES controller on it. 
This I actually did myself using my Snapmaker 2.0 machine. A video coming up on that machine shortly, hopefully. So subscribe if you want to see my thoughts on the Snapmaker. As you can see just from this case, uh, it did a pretty good job uh, engraving an NES controller on uh, my Z Fold case. Okay, so let's talk juice. How is the battery on the phone? I certainly don't think it's as bad as everyone is making out to be. I get it, you pay almost two grand for this phone, you expect top notch specs like the 5000 milliamp hour on the S21 Ultra and not the 4400 milliamp that we get on the Z Fold 3. But according to the battery monitor on their setting, I average about four hours of screen time from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. The longest I managed to go was four hours and 52 minutes of screen time on a single charge. I also managed nine hours of Pandora and two hours and 23 minutes upon screen time so battery life I mean isn't bad it does have enough milliamps to get you through your whole day no matter what your profession may be if you do get the fold you should consider topping off the phone whenever possible you should also consider turning on protect battery on the fold this will prevent your fold from charging past 85% the idea is that if you prevent overcharging you can extend the overall life of your battery this will have a uh, negative effect on your daily battery life but uh, it's a trade-off worth considering. Now for the S21 Ultra, the numbers are very different. I average a little over five hours of screen time with just about 30% battery life left around 10 p.m. Again, phone was unplugged at 7 a.m. and used throughout the day. I guess that extra 600 milliamp hour makes a pretty big difference. So what is it like to use the phone? It feels like walking around with an iPad mini that fits in my pocket. That's the best way I can describe it. Of course, we're only talking about the size, not OS, so I'm completely omitting the fact that the iPad is iOS and this runs Android. But surprisingly, Android 11 on this thing is really polished. The phone is just an absolute joy to use for people like me that have a thirst for bigger screen. I believe these foldable devices are the future, and not just in the sense of having a bigger display, but also in the sense of taking a typical phone like a Galaxy S21 Ultra and being able to fold it in half and carry it more comfortably in your pocket as the Galaxy Flip allows. I mean, imagine being able to fold a 24 inch monitor and put it in your backpack, getting to a hotel, pulling it out, and unfolding it on a table and connecting it to your laptop so you can work on a 24 inch screen while traveling. I mean that's a dream for anyone who travels a lot for work. But before we get there the folding tech will need to be more mainstream. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and tried to explain how cool my phone is because it's two screens that unfold and make a big display. Uh, scenario kind of goes like this. I don't know where it is. You know where it is? Oh, I thought you knew the way. Pull up, pull up your phone. Oh, yo! I I've read about. I know this phone. This is that 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 uh that big Samsung phone that has uh two displays in one. It's not two displays that make one dis display. It's it's a flexible display. Nah, bro. It's two displays yeah, in yeah. one. And two yeah. displays that make Pulse. one display. Um, so I can see I can see the line in one here. But when you open it, that's not two displays in one. That's actually one whole display. But it's flexible. What? Flex what? Nah, man. You pull my leg. Why would I be pulling your leg? Of course this is real. Flexible display, huh? Yeah, they just come out with that shit. And this, this is their third generation. They've been third doing generation? This since 2019. Third generation? 2019? Yeah. That's dope. That's cool right there. That's cool. People are blown away by the fact that it's one big display. They have no idea that tech exists. I mean, my cousin, who's a fairly tech savvy guy, had no idea that this phone was Samsung's third generation of their Z Fold. He didn't know there was a Z Fold 1 that came out in 2019 and a Z Fold 2 that came out in 2020. And if I had to guess, I'd say it may be from a lack of marketing. Just hear me out. 
If Apple had this folding tech for their iPhone 12, I guarantee you everyone would know about it. Everyone would see some awesome marketing video from Apple how convenient having a foldable phone is. Everyone would think that Apple invented the folding phone even though Samsung beat them to the punch back in 2019. But th this is just my take on it. If you have a different theory, uh, share it with us below. One thing I forgot to mention, the $1,800 price tag. Doi. That's another reason why the Z Fold isn't as popular as it maybe should be. Um, $1,800 is a lot for a phone. However, if you ask me if the phone is worth $1,800, I'd say yeah, it is. If you look at the phone as a whole, look at everything you're getting with this phone, I do think it's worth $1,800. Remember, you're not just getting a standard phone, you're getting a different experience. It's new technology. That's all I had to say. Let's get back to it. Anyway, that's my journey with the S21 Ultra and the Galaxy Z Fold. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give me thumbs up. This video was uh, a long time in the making. Um, trying to balance everything going on, it was kind of difficult. I'm glad to finally get this video out there, so please show some appreciation and thumbs up. Hope to catch you in the next one. Hasta luego muchachos. See ya.